Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Judge Garland, thank you for being here. Congratulations on your nomination. Thank you, Senator. Since uh, June of last year, the city of St. Louis, in my home state of Missouri, the homicide rate is at its highest level since 1970. 11 police officers have been shot, including former police officer David Dorn, who was murdered in cold blood during rioting in the city this past summer in Chicago. Homicides are up 50% in New York, 40%. In LA, 30%. Clearly, our criminal justice system is under renewed and fairly extreme strain. Can you tell me, if you are confirmed as Attorney General, what's the first thing you'll do to confront this growing crisis? Uh, I'm sorry, at the end, did you ask me what I would do or will I? W what will you do? I assume you'll do something. Yeah, what, yeah, what will you do? Yeah. So, uh, look, I am obviously, I've read the statistics myself, um, and I know that there's an upswing in violent crime. I'm very concerned about it. When I when I was an assistant U.S. attorney, uh, the number of murders in the district, I joined at a time when the number of murders in the District of Columbia were more than twice the number of murders that they are now. Uh, I spent much of my early, early career on this problem of violent uh, crime, uh, searching for uh, the best possible uh, ways to suppress it, uh, going after violent repeaters uh, being uh, one of the best ways going after violent gangs uh, that supported uh, violent uh, action being another important way, and putting uh, resources in the places uh, where they're necessary. Uh, again, sitting here uh, and, and therefore uh, only having been an observer of, of, uh, of this from the outside, I don't know uh, what uh, information the department has now. Um, but I, I'm, I was uh, a strong um, uh, supporter and, uh, and, and one of the developers of uh, the Violent Crime Initiative uh, during the time when I was in the Justice Department, and it may well be time for another one. I know that the uh, administration of uh, Attorney General Barr looked at this very closely as well. Uh, so I'd have to look at uh, you know what, what's going on in the department right now and what more needs to be done. But I share your concern. Very good. Thank you for that. Uh, in the midst of this, of this mounting crime wave, there has been increasing calls by some activists including members of the United States Congress, to defund the police. I have to tell you, I think this sends exactly the wrong message to law enforcement who feel very much overburdened, underpaid, under siege, and also sends the wrong message to folks who are suffering from this violent crime wave, especially working class communities. Uh, tell me what your position is on defunding the police. Do you support this movement? Will you support it as Attorney General? Well, as, as, you, as you no doubt know, um, President Biden has said he does not support uh, uh, defunding the police, and neither do I. Um, um, you know, we saw uh, how, how difficult the lives of police officers were in the uh, body cam um, uh, videos we saw when they were defending uh, the Capitol. Um, I do believe, and, 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 and um, um, President Biden believes in, in, in giving resources to police departments to help them uh, reform and gain the trust of their communities. Um, I do believe, and I believe he does as well, that we do need to put resources into alternative uh, ways of, conf of uh, uh, confronting some actors, particularly those who are mentally ill, um, and those who are suicidal, uh, so, um, so that police officers don't have to do a job that they're not trained for and that, uh, from what I understand, they do not want to do. And so those resources need to go to mental health professionals and other, uh, health profession and other professionals in the community so that uh, the police can do the job that they've trained for um, and, um, and uh, so that confrontations, if possible, uh, do not lead to uh, deaths and violence. So let me ask you about uh, assaults on uh, federal property in places other than Washington, D.C., Portland, for instance, Seattle. Do you regard assaults on federal courthouses or other federal property as acts of domestic extremism, domestic terrorism? Well, uh, Senator, um, my own definition, which is about the same as the statutory definition, is uh, a use of violence or threats of violence uh, in an attempt to uh, disrupt uh, democratic processes. So an attack on a, uh, uh, a courthouse while in operation, uh, trying to prevent judges from actually deciding cases, that plainly is um, domestic uh, um, uh, uh, extremism, um, 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 uh, uh, domestic uh, terrorism. Um, an attack simply on a government property at night or any other kind of uh, circumstances is a clear crime and a serious one and should be punished. I don't mean, I don't know enough of the, about the facts of the example you're talking about, but that's where I, I draw the line. One, one is both are uh, criminal, 
Um, uh, but one is uh, a core attack on our democratic institutions. Let me ask you about uh, something that it, uh, some progressive groups have recently been saying um, with regard uh, to you. The Progressive Change Campaign Committee, which is a left-wing activist group that does fundraising for Democrat Party causes, is circulating a petition addressed to you that states, and I quote now, Trump and his criminal network of associates must be investigated and prosecuted for law-breaking, end quote. This, of course, against the backdrop, Judge, of groups who are keeping lists of people who worked at the White House, including lists of interns who worked at the White House, trying to prevent them from getting jobs, uh, trying to uh, prevent them uh, from working, whether it's in politics or government or anywhere else. Again, uh, we have seen Senator Cruz, I know, asked you about political targeting. Uh, I have to say I'm, I'm very concerned about the specter of political targeting because it's happened before. It happened in the Obama-Biden administration. It happened, it culminated in the lies told to the FISA court during the last administration with the FBI, and sadly, the Department of Justice signed off on submissions to the FISA court, which, as you know, were falsified, actively falsified, leading to an unprecedented and historic rebuke from that court. My question is, given, given these, this pressure campaign already being mounted toward you, this, this petition that I just quoted is addressed to you personally, if you are confirmed, will you resist the calls and efforts by political groups to politicize the Department of Justice, to use political targeting? Will you adhere to the statute right down the middle and enforce the law fairly and equally? Senator, I've been a judge now for uh, almost 24 years. People on one side or the other of every single case, uh, 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 I think I've done the wrong thing in that case because uh, both sides can't win. Um, I have grown pretty immune uh, to any kind of pressure other than the pressure to do what I think is the right thing uh, given the facts and the law. That is what I intend to do as the Attorney General. I don't care who pressures me in whatever direction. The department under, if I am confirmed, will be under my protection for the purpose of preventing any kind of partisan or other improper motive in making any kind of investigation or prosecution. That's my vow. That's the only reason I'm willing to do this job. Do you agree that what the Department of Justice and the FBI did in misleading, deliberately misleading a FISA court, submitting false information to a FISA court, submitting falsified information and evidence to a FISA court, drawing the rebuke of that court, do you agree that that was an egregious violation of public trust? I think a false statement to a court is a, is a terrible thing. It is a, in, a, in a many, I, don't, I was going to say obstruction of justice, and it may well be, but that's, that's a very specific uh, concern. But I can tell you how angry judges get when they learn that somebody uh, who's made an application to them has not told them uh, the complete truth uh, or has uh, spun the truth in any way. And you, you hear those statements by judges uh, all the time, and appropriately so. Very good. Well, I thank you, Judge, and I hope if, if you are confirmed that you will indeed be that guardian to make sure that the rule of law is fairly enforced equally and that it is not used for political purposes. Mr. Chairman, my, I don't, my uh, time counter doesn't work. Do, am I, it's my time expired? Yes. It is. All right. All right. Thank, you very, thank you very much, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.